choir could hear me, but y'all couldn't hear me. So good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Come and help me this morning, but just a couple of announcements. First and foremost, if you don't have a bulletin, please grab one. I'm not going to make every announcement in the bulletin, um, but there's plenty going on. Um, our men's study, I think there's a deadline for that to sign up today. Um, wind shape camp, there's a number of uh, spots there that are available, so make sure you read that. Um, like I said, there's, there's plenty of announcements. On the back of the bulletin, um, it does say that Wednesday night, there's some locations changed, but that's going to go back to normal. Um, the adults will be here in the sanctuary, and the, the youth and children will be in their normal spots um, in the back. So if you will make note of that, but like I said, grab a bulletin. Um, there's plenty here. I'm not going to hold us up because I know we're all here for one reason, and that's to worship the Lord. Um, but number two, we got some sweet children that are going to sh share with us and help us worship the Lord. So I'm not going to hold us up any longer. I do have one special announcement, and I have a disclaimer. I've got some fine print with this announcement. I was just told about this as I was walking in, and please don't fire me for this. Um, the reason for this announcement um, is is something very special that we want to do. Um, and y'all know that Pastor Mark gives us his time. He gives us his heart. Um, he does a lot for us. If you call him one day here in the week, he's probably in between seeing somebody when he answers. Um, but that doesn't go with just Pastor Mark. Um, his family does a lot of sacrificing. His, his kids do a lot of sacrificing. But more importantly, there's somebody behind the scenes that keeps him straight. Um, and that's Miss Holly. So I do want to recognize Miss Holly. Miss Holly, if you'll come up here for just a second. And she is super shy. So you, this is why I said, don't fire me for this. <laughs> Miss Holly is, is, is a wonderful pastor's wife. Um, I see her encouraging him. I see, him pray, see her praying for him. And we just wanted to give her a token this morning of our appreciation as a pastor's wife and all that it, that entails and all that that takes. Miss Holly, we just want to say thank you and we love you, okay? So we've got some flowers and some cards for you. Y'all give her another round. <laughs> now, Holly, no special call deacons meetings because that was not my doing, so okay? <laughs> Let's pray this morning as we get ready to worship with these children. Father God, we do love you, and Father God, we do praise you, and we thank you for the people that you put in our lives, and we thank you for the, the pastor that we have and the burden that he has for this community and, and on his heart for, to reach lost souls, but also to lead your congregation and to lead your sheep. God, I just thank you so much for what he means to, to my life and my family, but also what Miss Holly means to us. God, we just thank you so much that she's 110% behind her husband, and she's praying for him and lifting him up to you daily and just making sure everything runs smoothly behind the scenes. And God, I just praise you and thank you for what you have blessed us with here at Southside. You've given us a, a good staff. You've given us um, excellent leaders. And God, I just thank you so much for what you are doing um, here at the church. And God, we give you praise, glory, and honor. God, it's such an honor to, to see these, these children come in and sit down and, and to be led to, to just sing praises to you. And, and God, I, I just I don't know where we would be without our children because... Yes, they are our future, but they're also our present. And God, we are not doing our jobs as Christians if we're not leading and guiding them to come closer to you each and every day of our lives with how we live. And God, we pray that we would receive a special blessing today. And I pray, God, that if somebody in this room, that they don't know you as personal Lord and Savior, I pray that today they would know you. And that today they would come to a, a relationship with you and they would confess that they're a sinner, but they're in need of a Savior. And God, I pray that you would save their souls today. Father, forgive us for we fail you. Be with us, lead us, and guide us. In your name we pray. Amen.
Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive.
we just wanted to share with y'all this morning just a couple of songs that we've sang throughout the years um, that, that means a lot to us. But I told the kids before we came down, if there's one person in this room who does not know Jesus Christ as their Savior, we encourage you not to leave this building before you talk to someone because that's the most important decision you'll ever make. Um, we got a couple out sick this morning, so we are down a few, but y'all did a fantastic job, and I'm super proud of y'all, okay? Um, so if you have a child that's not involved in choir, we meet on Wednesday nights at 630. We'd love to have you join us. Y'all can get back to your seats. Good job, guys. Amen. What a great day it is to be in the Lord's house. I tell you what, you, I always say you can learn a lot from a child. And just to watch a child's excitement as they're up here singing praises to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, how awesome is that? And y'all all know, I've, I've said it many times, victory in Jesus, that's what it's all about. We're all here today because if we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have victory in Jesus. But I, I want to take this time to uh, recognize Miss Beth. Ellis, she's going to get mad at me. Yesterday, we had the Easter egg hunt here, and folks, we had 5,500 eggs filled with candy that we had yesterday. We had a good meal, and everything went great, great turnout, so we thank you for that, and we also thank you for what you're doing with our children here. we seen this morning, so y'all join with me in giving her a round of applause. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I tell people all the time, we're blessed here at Southside with the staff that we have. We're so blessed to have Miss Beth working with our children and then to have Adam working with our youth. We're just so blessed here, and I thank the Lord every day that I get to work with these people. And uh, we get to share the love of Jesus to someone else, and that's what it's all about, folks. We need to be making sure that we're sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to someone else. And as Miss Beth said already, what it's all about is the decision. Have you made that decision to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? And if you have not done that, please do that before you leave this place today. This list here is our prayer list. This is front and back. I encourage you to pick this list up. I'm not going to read every name on here because if I did, we'd be here until midnight tonight. But I do want to point a few of these out. Do remember the families of uh, George Ramsey. Remember the family of Dottie Falcone. And also remember the family of Ima Jean Ellis. This is uh, Kevin Phillips' grandmother. Do remember this family in prayer. But also I've got a note here that says remember the family of Dr. Carnes. So remember his family as well. And then we have some, uh, Ed Wilkerson, as he had surgery this past Thursday. Now those of you who know Ed, Ed is 92 years old. And he had a complete shoulder replacement. And everything went as good as it could go. He did have some pain, but he's getting better. So do continue to pray for him as he continues to heal. Heather Hoyt, I think she is here today. Do remember her in prayer. She still has a ways to go, but she is celebrating and praising God that she's doing so much better. So do continue to pray for her in prayer. And then let's remember Raymond Yelton. Raymond Yelton goes for his back surgery this Friday. Do pray for him, very extensive surgery, but do pray that everything will be successful there and just pray that he'll be able to recover and get back on the right track. But do continue to pray for him. And then also Steve Green, you know, Steve Green had the gallbladder surgery, and as I told you, it was worse than what the doctors had thought. So he had got to come home, he was doing better, and then he started running a fever. So he had to go back to the doctor, and they're treating him with antibiotics, and things like that. But he goes back tomorrow to see the surgeon who performed the surgery. So do be in prayer for him. And then also remember Miss Jewel Durham in prayer. This is Neil's, Neil Durham's mother. As uh, she had to have an epidural for back pain. Miss Jewel's got a lot going on. Epidural for back pain. Getting ready for a knee replacement surgery. And then also she's having problems with her vision due to macular degeneration. So do remember Miss Jewel in prayer. I know her and Brother Haskell would greatly appreciate her prayers. Are there any unspoken prayer needs this morning? 
We all stand in need of prayer. And as I always encourage you, let me encourage you to pray for somebody who you know is lost. Every person in this room knows at least one person who is lost. Let me encourage you to pray for that person. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, we thank you for the excitement in your house this morning. Lord, just the excitement we get when our children do things for you, God. We thank you and we praise you for that. Lord, I pray that, that your name was glorified this morning through the singing of these children. And Father God, I do pray for the ones who are on our list here this morning, this prayer list. Lord, it's extensive and it's long. And, and Lord, we don't know every name maybe. And Lord, we don't know every need. But Father, you do. And Lord, I pray that your perfect will be done in each and every situation. Lord, for the ones who've lost loved ones this week, Lord, I pray that you would be with those families in a special way, and Lord, that you would just comfort them as only you can. And Father God, I pray that they would just hold on to you a little bit tighter. Lord, for Brother Raymond, as he goes this week to have his surgery, Lord, I pray that, that everything would go well, Father. Lord, I pray that you would use the doctors and nurses in a special way, Lord, that you would just guide their hands, and Lord, this surgery will be successful. Lord, we pray for Brother Steve. Just pray that he'll be able to get over whatever's going on with him, Lord, and just pray that it just be some little small infection and something that medicine can take care of. Lord, we pray for Brother Ed. Just pray that you'll continue to heal him. And Lord, just pray that his shoulder would get better. And Lord, for Miss Jewel, we pray for her in a special way, Lord. We just uplift her to you now, Lord, and ask that your perfect, precious will be done in her life. And Lord, just pray that you'd be with her in a special way. And Lord, for the rest of this service here today, Lord, we pray that everything that's said and done will be pleasing to you. And Father, we pray if there's one here that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, then today would be their day of salvation. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen.
You may be seated. If ushers would make their way up at this time. Let us pray. Our most gracious, most loving, heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for this day. We thank you, Lord, for what we've experienced here so far today. And, Lord, if, you, if people are here today and haven't been touched, Lord, we pray for them because the children have sung their hearts out and they presented the message, Lord, that, that we all need to hear. And we hope that we, we have heard it, that we not only heard it, but we're going to apply it to our lives today and moving forward. And Lord, as we come to this time of the service where we take up an offering, we pray, Lord, that you will bless this offering, that you will multiply it, and that we as a church would use it for the furtherance of your kingdom. But most of all, Lord, today we just want to say that we love you. For it's in your name we pray and ask these things. Amen. Good morning. How are y'all doing? Good? I need four helpers. Okay. Don't open it. Don't open it. Okay. Don't open it. Okay. I'm sorry. It's open. All right. So, what did we do yesterday? Easter egg hunt. Did y'all have fun at the Easter egg hunt? What did you get in the Easter eggs? Lots of candy, right? Favorite kind of candy, I hope? Yeah, lots and lots of candy. So it's fun, right? Well, did you know that we can take these Easter eggs today? There's not candy in them. Don't open them yet, okay? But we can take these Easter eggs, Easter eggs today and tell the story of what happened to Jesus, okay? So we're going to do that this morning. Who has got the blue egg? Lift it up high, Amelia. All right, open that egg up. What do you see? That's right. It's a cross, okay? You see the cross? All right. Tell me about the cross. Who died on this cross? 
Jesus died on this cross. That's exactly right. Did anybody make him die on this cross? No? That's exactly right. He chose to die on this cross. Nobody made him do it. Why in the world did he choose to die on the cross? That's right. He loved us and he, he wanted to save us from our sins. That's right. Because without him, we can't live in eternity in heaven with him, right? I'll let you put that back in. Okay, who's got the red one? All right, Austin, can you pop it open? All right, what do you see? Nails. Let me see those and see if you do these, okay? Okay, nails. How does the nail, where does that fit into the story? That's right, they nailed him to the cross. Did the nails look like this? They were big, huge nails. Have you ever had a nail stuck in your hand? With a nail, yeah. Have you ever got, okay, have you ever had to have your finger pricked to get, get okay, at the doctor's office when they prick your finger? Yeah, it, you cry, right? It hurts, right? That little prick hurts, right? But can you imagine having a big nail pushed through your hands and your feet? And he chose to do that for us, right? Don't you know it was so painful? And I can't imagine what he went went through us through on the cross for us, okay? Think about that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm sure it hurt really, really, but he chose to do that for us, okay? Who's got the yellow X? Here again, all right, pop it open. What do you see? A rock, okay? How does this fit into our story? The stone, yes. The tomb, that's right. Jesus died on that cross, okay? He died. And then they put him in a tomb, and they rolled this big stone in front of the tomb, okay? Why did they do that? They sealed it up. They didn't want anybody going in and stealing Jesus' body, you know, because they he had told that he was going to rise again, but they rolled this big stone in front of the tomb. But could that big stone hold Jesus in the tomb? Mm-mm. It didn't, did it? Who's got my last egg? Who's got the purple egg? Claire, pop it open. What's in there? Nothing. What does that represent? He arose, didn't he? He didn't stay in that tomb, did he? After three days... He arose. And where is he at now? Waiting on us, right? Because he died for our sins, and if we accept him, where will we be? With him for eternity. That's right. That's right. That's right. So next time you open up an egg and it's empty, I want you to remember this. That tomb, Jesus, that tomb did not hold Jesus in, did it? The stone didn't hold, the nails didn't hold him to the cross. He arose, and he's our Savior, and that's what kind of Savior we worship, okay? All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you this day. Thank you for this special day, Lord, that we could come and celebrate you and sing praises to you. And dear God, I thank you for this season that we're going into, Lord. I pray that everybody here remembers what you did for us so many years ago on that cross, Lord, and we thank you for sacrificing your life for us. In your name we pray, amen. Four years to first grade, y'all come on up. nervous. We're going to try this. Hopefully it doesn't fall. Well, good morning again. I'm going to ask you one more time. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen to that. As Adam was coming back in, he asked me to announced that if we have anybody who would be willing to do haircuts for Clean Start this Saturday to please see him when the service is over today. So if you are able to do haircuts this Saturday, please see Adam after church today. (laughs) He said, come on. He said, come on. So come on. A little boy was sick on Palm Sunday and stayed home from church with his mother. His father returned from church holding a palm branch. The little boy was curious and asked, Why do you have that palm branch, Dad? You see, 
When Jesus came into town, everyone waved palm branches to honor him. So we got palm branches today. The little boy replied, Ah, shucks, the one Sunday that I miss is the Sunday that Jesus decides to show up. <laughs> you know, we laugh, we laugh. I tell you all the time, we can learn a lot from a child. But how many of us adults can say the same thing? That we come to church each and every Sunday just because it's a routine or just because it's something to check off of the to-do list rather than coming into church and expecting Jesus to do great things. Amen. So we can learn a lot from a child. As I read that this week, I thought, I said, man, that's a pretty neat story. But this morning, as many of you already know, is Palm Sunday, the day taken from the Gospels, and it is in all four Gospels, where a whole city threw a parade for Jesus. As Jesus rode into the city, the people threw palm branches in anticipation of his coming. Thus, we get our word Palm Sunday. This day marked a time of celebration where Jesus was worshipped and praised. But you see, this day is bittersweet to us because even as we read of the celebration, folks, we know that Friday is coming. We know that Friday is coming. The cross is coming. We know that many in this same crowd will within a few, few short days exchange words of praise to words of death. The same folks who are praising Jesus are going to be yelling, shouting, crucify him just a few days later. Shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. And then later on, shouting, crucify him, crucify him. This morning, I want to focus our attention on two services both which focused on Jesus, but both had two separate results. So I'm going to read two different scriptures today, and I've asked John to put them up on the screen, so I hope he's got them up for us. The first scripture that I'm going to read comes in Luke chapter 19, and I'm going to read verses 29 through 44. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 19, verses 29 through 44, and the words should be up on the screen. And then after I read this script, this scripture, I'm going to flip over and read Matthew 27, verses 15 through 26. So if you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me first off to Luke. And I'm going to hold my Bible because I'm afraid it may fall. Turn with me to Luke 19, 29 through 44. And it says, As he approached Bethpage and Bethany, at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Say, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent, sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Verse 41, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, if, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. So we see here that, that Jesus is coming into Jerusalem here, and we see that they're praising Jesus, right? There, there's a parade, you know, just for Jesus. This whole parade is for Jesus, praising him. Hosanna, Hosanna, you know, just, just worshiping Christ, right? And then we see just a few days later, flip over with me, flip over with me to Matthew 27, Matthew 27, 
verses 15 through 26. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. When Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. Now, how many wives are sitting here saying, See, husbands, that's why you should always listen to your wives. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you, asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then when Jesus, who is called the Messiah, Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they, they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but, was instead, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had, he, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the reading of your precious word. Lord, we see here two separate stories, Lord, both about you but with two different outcomes. Lord, if we're honest, we're like a lot of these people in these stories, Lord. We, we're praising you one day and we're shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. And then, Lord, sometimes maybe things don't always go our way and, and maybe our life's not going the way that you want us to go, Lord. And then we may be shouting in our own way, crucify him, crucify him. Lord, I pray that no matter what we go through in life, that, Lord, we're always ready to shout, Hosanna, Hosanna. And, Lord, I pray for this message today. Lord, I pray that I just get my old stubborn self out of the way. And, Lord, I pray that, that when I open my mouth this morning, Lord, that the words that you would have for us to hear will come out of my mouth. And, Lord, I pray if there's one here today that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, then I pray that today would be their day of salvation. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So this morning, I want us to look at the two separate things here, the two separate focuses on the two services here this morning. You ever heard of the great evangelist Billy Graham? Billy Graham once said, has been quoted as saying this many times, as saying that the greatest mission field in our country today is in our local church. The people sitting already in our churches. Now, I'm not sure whether this statement is true or not, but one thing that I do know is that many people know what to say, they know how to say it, and they even know how to act in it. But when the rubber truly meets that road, there is no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, there's no salvation, it's just empty words. That's all it is. We see a perfect example of this in our two passages this morning. On Sunday, Jesus rode into the city with the people shouting praises and praising God for all the wonderful miracles that they had seen. On Friday, they are shouting, give us Barabbas. We want him. Crucify Jesus. Crucify him. So my question to you this morning is, why the change? Why the change? How do you go from Hosanna, Hosanna to crucify him? Why the change? There are many possible reasons, but one simple reason is that their words did not match their heart. You know anybody like that who, when they tell you something, it really doesn't mean that much because to them it's just empty words. You know, it, it doesn't match their heart. They're just telling you something. They possess a casual and not a committed faith. Folks, are you committed in your relationship with Jesus Christ? Are you committed in your walk with the Lord or is it just something casual? We need to be fully committed in our walk with the Lord. You see, they had religion, but the thing is, they missed the person who the religion is about and that is Jesus. Folks, don't miss Jesus. Make sure you've got Jesus. So how can we have a committed faith? How can we be real and sincere? How can we be consistent in all that we do? Well, this morning I want to offer you some keys 
to just such a faith. I got three things that I want to mention to you this morning. The first key is that a committed faith is not self-centered. It is Christ-centered. Folks, that should make all the sense in the world. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. And that's what our life should reflect. We should spend the times that, that the Lord blesses us with here on this side doing everything we can to praise and worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and share the good news to a lost and dying world who needs to hear it. So it sounds obvious, but here's the thing, folks. We often miss it. We miss it. You know, I, I said it last week. I said it during the revival services, and I even had Brother Rick quoted it to me yesterday at a wedding that we went to yesterday. Folks, 42,426 people in Cherokee County, yes, the Cherokee County that you live in or you work in or your children go to school in, are people unchurched. 42,426 people this morning here in Cherokee County are not in church this morning. Folks, we have a great mission field right here where we live. We need to make sure that we're out sharing the love of Jesus to someone else. So we must have a committed faith. How can we be real and, consist, uh, real and sincere and consistent in all that we do? The first thing we need to be is, is Christ-centered. You see, in America, we tend to say to God, Hey, God, here is my calendar. Here is my agenda. You know, on this day, I can do this for you, but you know, you know, i got to put this in there, Lord, so if this is more important or something that, that means more to me than my walk with you, then guess what, Lord? That day, you're just going to have to be pushed to the side, and I'm going to have to fill my agenda and do what I need to do here. That's the way that we do here in America. We're, we're about that. You know, we, we just put God off and, and pulling God out or turning to God only when it is convenient are useful. You ever do that? You ever never think about God? You never talk to God? You never pray to God except when you need something? Anybody in here know anybody that when the phone rings, they know without a shadow of a doubt they're going to ask you for something? You know before you answer that phone, he or she is fixing to ask me for something or to do something for them because that's the only time I hear from them. What about your walk with the Lord? Is that the only time that the Lord hears from you is when you need something from him? Folks, if that's the case, we're, we're doing it wrong. We're doing it wrong. In our passage, the people praised Jesus as he passed by, but many of them praised him for two reasons. The first reason they praised him for was because of his miracles. Folks, you see, we know Jesus healed the sick. He raised the dead. They praised him because he was serving them. In other words, they, had, they could use him, in other words. That's the best way to put it. They thought that, they, that he could help them, so therefore that's why. The second thing is because they saw in Jesus a way to be politically delivered from the Romans. You see, to be set from Rome as Israel was set free from Egypt, their praise was tempered with the attitude of Jesus, what can you do for me? Jesus, what can you do for me? Do you ever ask Jesus that? Jesus, what do I get out of this? You know, if I come and do something, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? You know, I've mentioned it before. When is the last time you asked Jesus, Jesus, what can I do for you today? Jesus, what can I do for you today? When's the last time you asked Jesus that? But I'm sure you've asked Jesus to do a lot of things for you. A few days later at the trial, they saw a beaten and disfigured Jesus, a man who no longer looked like a deliverer or a conqueror. And as words were said about him, they bought into all the lies and quickly changed their position. You see, for them, it was all about me, 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 me. And folks, we go through life like that so many times where it's all about me. I'm going to take care of me, myself, and I. I'm number one, I'm number two, and I'm number three. That's the way that we look at it. What is in it for me? I, I read a little story this week as I was preparing for this, and I, I think this is a good illustration here. It says, there is a legend about an ancient village in Spain. The villagers learned that the king would pay a visit. In a thousand years, a king had never came to that village. Excitement grew. We must throw a big celebration, they said. The villagers all agreed, but you see, this was a poor village, and there weren't many resources. Someone came up with a classic idea. Since many of the villagers made their own wines, the idea was for everyone in the village to bring a large cup of their choice wine to the town square. 
we'll pour it into a large vat and offer it to the king for his pleasure. When the king draws wine to drink, it will be the very best he's ever tasted. The day before the king's arrival, hundreds of people lined up to make their offering to the honored guest. They climbed a small stairway and poured their gift through a small opening at the top. Finally, the vat was full. The king arrived, was escorted to the square, given a silver cup, and was told to draw some wine, which was represented by the best the villagers had. Now remember, they're bringing the best that they have, right? He placed the cup under the spigot, turned the handle, and then drank the wine, but it was nothing more than water. Nothing more than water. You see, every villager reason, I'll withhold my best wine and substitute water. What with so many cups of wine in the vat, the king will never know the difference. You see, the problem was everyone thought the same thing, and the king was greatly dishonored. How many of us do that to Jesus? How many of us withhold our best from Jesus, and we take shortcuts, just as these people did here? Here they were honoring a king who had been a thousand years since somebody, a king had been to visit their village, and yet they come up with this idea to give the king their best wine. But yet when they all show up to give their best wine, they all show up with water, thinking, well, you know what? Somebody else will bring the good wine. I don't have to bring anything. How many times in churches, y'all know y'all have always heard the old saying, 90-10 in the church, 10% of the people do 90% of the work? Folks, it shouldn't be that way. It should be 100% of the church doing the Lord's work. And that's how the church is going to grow. You see, today, Palm Sunday, 2024, choose to honor our great King Jesus Christ by giving him your very best, withholding nothing, giving him your all. Folks, we're going to celebrate Easter coming up a week from today. Folks, Jesus gave us his best. He gave us everything he had. He held back nothing. He held back nothing. Folks, I've shared it before, and Miss Beth went into it a little bit this morning. Those nails are what I like to refer to railroad spikes that went into Jesus' arms and, 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 I mean, his hands and his feet. That's not what held Jesus on that cross. You and I held Jesus on that cross. Jesus could have called thousands of angels to take him off of that cross. But you see, we sang a song about it, Miss Tammy. When he, and he being Jesus, when he was on the cross, guess what? I and you was on his mind. Jesus withheld nothing. So why don't we withhold from him? If he's going to give us his best, then he deserves our best. He doesn't deserve anything but our best. And then the second key is that a committed faith is relationship driven. Many of those who gathered to throw their coats and palm branches onto the street and who shouted praises did so because it was the popular thing to do at the time. Anybody ever do that? And we just come through Christmas, right? And everybody had to have a Stanley Cup, right? And I'm not talking about the, the, the trophy you win if you win the, the National Hockey League Championship. Not that Stanley Cup. You've got to have one of these, what are they, about $50 Stanley Cups, if I'm right? You can't go to Walmart and get like a $5 one that works just as good. You've got to have the Stanley Cup. You know why? Because everybody else is doing it. Folks, just because everybody else is doing something doesn't make it right. If everybody else is doing it and it's not pleasing the Lord, then guess what? You better not be doing it. Stand firm with the Lord. Stand firm with the Lord. But these same people who were shouting and, and because it was the popular thing to do, but you see at that one brief moment it became trendy. Perhaps some began doing it with sincere motives, but others soon did it because others were doing it. And then later at the trial, shouting, crucify him. That was the thing to do too, right? It was the thing to do because everybody else was doing it. In fact, for a brief moment, it was the trendy thing to do because, think about this right here, folks. I want you to think about this. Barabbas, Barabbas here. Now, here is a guy who is a mass murderer, right? Mass murderer. Now, that means he's, he's, he's killed more than one person. He's a mass murderer. He's a criminal. And their hero when they shouted, we want Barabbas. Folks, we chose, or these people here, they chose a mass murderer 
over Jesus Christ. Give me the mass murderer and let's get rid of Jesus. Now we sit here and we shake our heads and we say, you know what, we'll never do that. But folks, we do the same thing sometimes. When the world tries to come inside the church and the church allows the world to come inside the church, guess what, church? Then we've done nothing better than what they've done here. We've basically allowed Barabbas in the door and we've kicked Jesus out. Folks, it can't be that way. The church has to go into the world and take Jesus into the world, and that's the only way that this world is going to get back to Jesus Christ. Amen. Folks, I've said it before. We've been through tomorrow. We'll start our fifth week of revival, and there's some people in here who have been to every single one. But I'm here to tell you, and listen to me very closely, revival will never start until it starts in your own heart. It must start with you. Don't expect somebody else to do something that you're not doing yourself. It starts in your own heart. You see, in our own lives, we need to have a committed faith that comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. One where every day is fresh and new as he personally directs our steps. How many times have y'all heard me say, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you should do is praise God that you woke up. Very first thing you should do. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up today. The next thing you should do is ask the Lord, God, what can I do for you today? Lord, what can I do for you today? That should be the first two things that we do every single day of our life. And you know what? The Lord will direct our steps. As I've told you so many times, the Lord will take every step you take right beside you, holding your hand, and he will be there th with you through the highs and the lows. He'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. And I praise Jesus for that. But you see, in order to have a committed faith, we must develop and maintain a personal relationship with Jesus. Folks, try to stay away from your husband or wife for about two or three months. Where do you think that will get you? Probably not in a good place. Folks, the way that this world is going, we cannot afford to take one day away from Jesus Christ. We should be walking with Jesus every day of our life. Every day. Every single day. And then a third key is that committed faith is not swayed or blocked by our personal trials and crisis. You see, at the parade, it was trendy to offer praise. Everybody was doing it. But at the trial, to speak out for Jesus was risky, possibly even life-threatening. Folks, I've shared with you before, it's easy to praise Jesus when everybody's doing it. It's easy to stand with Jesus when everybody's doing it. But folks, what are you going to do when, when everybody's going against what Jesus stands for? Are you going to stand up for Jesus or are you just going to follow the crowd? Folks, I'm here to tell you too many times as Christians, we've just followed the crowd. And that's how we get into the positions that we've gotten into. I've shared it before. How many, how many of you ever thought you would see the day right here in Cherokee County? You know, we live in the south here, right? We're considered the Bible Belt, right? How many of you ever thought that on a Sunday, right here in Cherokee County, that it would be legal to go and buy alcohol on a Sunday? You remember the days on Sunday to where I think the stores opened from, was it 1.30 to 6? That was it. And then they were closed. Folks, now everything's open. Everything's open. We can even buy alcohol on Sunday. Folks, we're not even keeping the Lord's Day sacred anymore. And sometimes we have to stand up for Christ when it's the unpopular thing to do. I've asked you before, and, and you know, missionaries, we give, we're taking up offering right now for missionaries. But how many times have you seen on TV to where a missionary has been asked before, point blank, do you believe in Jesus Christ? And you've even heard it said before to where somebody is, I'm going to keep this clean because we have some children in here, where some people's lives have been threatened and said, if you will just denounce Jesus, you will live. But if you stand firm and say, you know what, I'm with Jesus, then we're going to take your life. Folks, are you willing to lose your life in order to stand for Jesus? That's a question you have to answer. How far are you willing to go to stand with the Lord? You see, here it was possibly life-threatening. Many of us come to Jesus expecting everything to go good, right? You know, I believe in God. My relationship's where it needs to be. Everything is just going to be smooth all the time. You know, maybe we'll have some slight bad, but, but not too much. So when the bottom drops out for us, what is the first thing that we often do? 
we ask God why. Why, Jesus? Why? Why am I going through this? Thinking that it's not supposed to happen this way. You see, here's what I want you to realize this morning. If our faith is based on our situations or circumstances, guess what? It will never be committed. You'll never have a committed relationship with the Lord if it's based on your current situation. If you want to be fully committed to the Lord, then you know that the Lord is going with you every step of your life. And even though it's something you don't want to be going through right now, guess what? This is where the Lord wants you at this specific moment. If you're following the Lord's will. Even if I go to the doctor tomorrow and I get bad news, hey, I'm still going to praise Jesus because I know that his plan is perfect. I've never known Jesus to make a mistake. Every promise that he's ever made, he's fulfilled. So why would he change now? I'm going to stand on his track record. If our faith is based on that, then we've never been committed to start with. It will always be casual. You see, in my life, I've gone to, to several different Christian events, many packed you know, facilities where we're praising God and, and the whole arena's rocking there where everybody's praising. And it's easy, right, Adam? Y'all just got back from the winter retreat. You're in there. What was there? 12, did you say 12,000 people? 15,000 people singing and praising Jesus. Guess what? It's easy to shout amen when there's 12,000 other people doing it. It's easy to do. You're up on this high, but guess what? You come home the next day. Are you still on that high for Jesus? What happened? What happened? See, you get around a bunch of other believers, and it's easy to praise the Lord. But then you come back to school, or you come back to work, and these things like that, it's, it, you find out it's not as easy here. But why is it not as easy? Because you're not doing your part. You're not doing what the Lord has called you to do, which is to share Jesus with somebody else. You see, a committed faith takes the good with the bad. Knowing that all we are ever promised is that in the midst of both our good and the bad, guess what, folks? Jesus will never forsake you, and he'll never leave you. Never leave you. In the good or bad, he will stand with us. I want to close with this right here. A story, of a, a story is told of a little girl who, while walking in a garden, noticed a particularly beautiful flower. I could just picture my little Gracie. I could see her doing this. Notice this pretty flower. She admired its beauty and enjoyed its fragrance. It's so pretty, she exclaimed. As she gazed on it, her eyes followed the stem down to the soil in which it grew. This flower is too pretty to be planted in such dirt, the little girl cried. So she pulled it up by its roots and ran to the water faucet to wash away the soil. It wasn't long until the flower wilted. And guess what, folks? The flower died. The flower died. You see, when the gardener saw what the little girl had done, he exclaimed, you have destroyed my finest plant. And the little girl said, I'm sorry, but I didn't like it in that dirt. The gardener replied, I chose that spot and mixed the soil because I knew that only there could it grow to be a beautiful flower. Folks, if you're walking with the Lord and you're trusting in the Lord and you're committed to the Lord, even if you're going through a tough time, you're where the Lord wants you to be. And here's the thing. You're not going to stay there forever. You're not going to stay there forever. The Lord is going to bring you through it. Just keep on staying committed. Keep on staying committed to the Lord. You see, God has placed us exactly where we are. We must trust him. And the trust, and we eventually see that he is using our pressures, our trials and difficulties to bring us to a new degree of spiritual beauty. True contentment comes when we accept what God is doing. And guess what, folks? We thank him for it. The Lord has a plan. The Lord has a plan. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans for a hope and a future. I don't know about y'all, but I love the sounds of that. I love the sounds of that. Thank you, Jesus. You see, this morning I want to ask you a simple question. Is your faith casual or is your faith committed? As we approach this week where our Jesus suffered incredibly for us, in a week where our sins, folks, guess what? Our sins, past, present, and future, 
were taken care of. The nails that hung him on that cross, doesn't Jesus deserve a second look? Doesn't he deserve total control of your life? Doesn't Jesus deserve a personal relationship with you? This week, consider it all and choose to give it all to him. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you, God, for this day. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity and, Lord, yes, the privilege because, Lord, it is a privilege to be able to come into your house and freely worship you. God, I pray, Lord, as we come upon this day, Lord, today, Palm Sunday, that, Lord, we look in our own lives and, Lord, we see, God, to where even in our own lives, God, we praise you today and then, Lord, tomorrow we're, we're, we're not going to do any Jesus at all. Lord, I pray that we would just search our own hearts and see, God, that we need to be praising you every day. And, Lord, you need to be the Lord of our life every day. And, Father, I pray if there's one here today who's never made the decision to accept you as their personal Lord and Savior, then, Lord, I pray that today would be their day of salvation. Lord, if there's someone here today and they want to come and, and join this church, Lord, I pray that they would just come down and do that today as well. Lord, this is your altar. And both sides of it are open this morning. And God, if there's someone here who just needs to come and kneel and pray at this altar, Lord, I pray that they would come and take care of that today. Lord, whatever needs to happen during this, your time of invitation, Lord, I pray that it will be done. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Spirit, breathe on me until my heart is clean. Let sunshine fill its sinner's part with not a cloud between. Breathe on Breathe on. 
at this time, please be seated for just a few moments. I'm going to ask first, Cameron, you and Pam, if y'all would come forward at this time. We have coming before us this morning. Several of y'all may have already thought that they were already members of the church here because they've been coming for, for years now, but they've never made it official and truly came down and, and joined the church. So we have coming for us today, we have Mr. Cameron and Miss Pam Dixon, and they come this morning seeking membership of our church here. Do you rejoice in their decision? Amen. Amen. If y'all would, step right over here. Miss Mary, you good? We won't hold this Clemson hat against Miss Mary this morning. <laughs> this is Miss Mary Rose. Y'all know Miss Mary Rose has been coming to church with us for what, Miss Mary? About a year now, maybe? Yeah. And Miss Mary comes this morning seeking membership of our church by transfer letter from a local Southern Baptist church. Do you rejoice in her decision? <laughs> Amen. Amen. You stand, stand right here. You can't run away that easy. I tell you, it, it's always good to see people come forward for the Lord. Whether they come forward to, to give their heart to Jesus, which is the most important thing that will ever happen in their life, the most important decision they'll ever make in their life. Or if they come forward and just kneel and pray at the altar, and folks, give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Whatever you've got going on in your life right now, and I know some of you are really hurting, Give it to the Lord. You've tried everything else. You've tried to take care of it on your own. You've listened to other people tell you how to fix it. Folks, listen to the Lord. Just give it to the Lord. And then it's always good to see people come forward and, and join our church. What a blessing it is. So normally what we do is we have people come by and welcome our new members who have joined this morning, but we're fixing to go into a business meeting. So what we're going to do is, if y'all don't mind, maybe just sit back down front here, and after the business meeting, we're going to have you come back up. We can't let you go without everybody hugging and squeezing on you a little bit. So at this time, if you would, please stand. And I'm going to ask the question that I ask every Sunday, because, folks, we're still here. We haven't left yet. All hearts and minds clear? All hearts and minds clear. Well, at this time, if you are a guest this morning, I know we have a couple who came to watch the children sing, but if you are a visitor this morning, please feel free to leave at this time. But if you are a church member, we do ask that you stay because we have a business meeting that we need to, to take in at this time. So, guest, if you don't mind, go ahead and, and you can dismiss at this time. Also, if you have some, uh, some children in the children's church or nursery, if you would go and get them at this time. <laughs> 